Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Daily Magic. My name is Slytherin Knight, and I am so happy you could join me. So, today's daily quest is to cast 20 black or green spells. Easy enough to take care of. We do not have a dedicated Golgari deck anymore. Eh, maybe the new expansion will give me some better ideas. So, today we're going to do some mono green. Nothing has changed since the last time we ran this deck. Still a pretty heavy focus on getting out bigger creatures with uh, other ways of getting, you know, forests and land on the field. So yeah, <laughs> not much to really say. With that out of the way, let's give this a shot. First opponent, Memphis Vinny. Nice to meet you, Vinny. I hope we have a good match today. Not a terrible start. We'll go with the Adeptive. We'll start off with the Adeptive. I don't think Cenote Scout's ability will trigger. It might. So no. I was wondering if it got boosted to a 2-2, that probably wouldn't have activated Adeptive's ability because it didn't enter as a 2-2. So, that is perfectly fine. Huh. Bold of you to assume we're using um, spells. Well, I guess we are, but... We'll probably go with this one's ward first. No real reason to attack here. They would have killed either one of them and had dealt no damage to Thalia. We'll be going in with our Furox next turn. This one takes five, yeah, five total mana to activate, so we'll have to wait on that. Not sure what they're doing hovering over our cards here. If they attack, I'm going to take the hit. Ah, uh, they're trying to decide who the Brutal Cap is. Oh, gotcha. That's entirely fair. Just the one. So, take the four damage or lose. Or lose something. I like where we're sitting at the moment, but that can always change in a heartbeat. And they really want me to have a Bloomkin, don't they? I could send you out, and I'll probably do it next turn. Surprising. We're gonna take you out first. Oh no, that okay, that was right. With them both being first strikers. Okay, well played. Yeah, with them both being first strikers. Um it took it took them out. That's too bad. Yeah, that is too bad. I really don't have a reason to. It's a 4-4 defender until you give it something else. Right, that lets it egg out again. That what that's annoying. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and this one for your cost.
Okay. Not the greatest, but we'll deal with it. Ooh, 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 very nice. I wonder. Um, yes, I can do it. Oh, I can do... No, we'll just do the full. Yeah, we'll do the full thing. Yeah. Yep, might as well use its full ability. Really? They all have. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, good game. did get rid of all of them. <laughs> that is one of the first times I've ever been able to do something like that. We took them to negative 42 and didn't lose a creature. Whew. Terrifying. But that went very well. I am very happy. <laughs> and only got seven of it done. Surprising. Either way... Let's move on to the next one. No matter what happens from this point out in the episode, I am happy. Because I finally got someone to like a super negative number. Negative 42, jeez. Alright, second match. Highly doubt it's going to be as good as that, pre as that first one. Highly doubt it. But you never know. And they immediately concede. Okay, that that's fine. Uh, we'll take the win. Can't really see why. There's not there aren't any there aren't many um green decks that I can think of that would immediately constitute a um, a concede. Well, then again, if you're playing Simic, green-blue, and you're playing the Toxic deck, then yeah, maybe. We did, the reason I'm checking, we leveled up, and I wanted to see, we got a Pact open, so that'll be nice. But I guess, yeah, let's go ahead and go into a third match. That, I <laughs> don't know what to think. Actually, I'm a little disappointed. I was curious to see how that how that match would have gone with the hand with the uh, hand we had. Okay. Oh, cool. That does mean we have a bit of a, of a we have a bit of a brick at the moment. So unless I can grab, unless we can pull another mana. This is an aura enchantment, so let's go ahead and buff up, I guess, you. That's fine. Still take you still take some damage and I get a draw. Uh, we'll hold on to that for now. Gotcha. I'm trying to remember exactly what Feral Encounter actually does. I'm gonna go ahead and play it because I need. Yeah, I'll take that. So I can play that. There. I had to do something. Yeah, I had to do something, so... Why did it immediately go to a fire? Forgot about that. I'm 
another roaming throne. It triggers just the ones, yeah. It's creature abilities trigger, right? Yeah, another creature. Unless we can pull mana. No, there we go. I was saying, unless we can pull some mana, um, not a lot is going on for you. Actually, you know what? We'll, we'll attack with everything. We're going to deal some, da some damage somewhere. So, And if they, and if they decide to block a Ferox, they'll lose whatever they're blocking with. I mean, we're going to take a big hit next turn anyway. It really doesn't matter. In fact, they might actually do this next turn because that's that's ten damage, and if they play if they play even three creatures, which they might be able to, they better hope they beat us this turn. Okay, I think it's one damage. Yeah, they probably have enough in there. Oh, they don't. I told you, you have to collect four. Yeah, they didn't have evidence. They didn't have um, four mana worth of stuff in there, in the back. Surprising. That is very surprising. And that should, yeah. How did that work? Hold on, I want to read something. I want before we before we end the mat, I want to read what that just did. Whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creatures, put a counter on this card, then create X, one one colorless. Right. And then it triggered twice because of this. If a trigger ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, which would be soldier, you're a soldier, it triggers an additional time, triggers an additional time, creating six. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Only one thing was attacking. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. Well, no, it shouldn't shouldn't have. Or does it only trigger? I'm not sure now. Now, now I'm a little confused because it only created six instead of nine. If it had triggered twice, you know, two times additionally, one for each Roman castle, it would have created nine tokens. Am I right? Yeah. Either way, don't know, unless I'm, unless I'm just missing something. But with that, that is three matches in. We're close enough to 15 minutes. I don't really want to risk going too far over, so we're going to wrap it up here. We do have a few consolations, uh, consolation prizes though. A mastery orb I got, got uh, behind the scenes the other day. So second to last on the blue line. Card style four. Profs eidetic. Memory. Okay. You have no maximum hand size. This you know, draw a card when this enters. Beginning of combat on your turn. If you've drawn more than one card this turn, put an, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn minus one. So typically at most it's gonna be like just a just a single plus one. Gotcha. Alright, that's not that bad. And like I said, we do have a pack to open for March of the Machine. Not really looking for anything specific. No, nothing new in the commons and uncommons. What's our rare? Seti on Fire, which may or not be my fourth copy. If it's not my fourth copy, then it's like my fifth or sixth. So we'll take it. But with that, we are going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed this episode, which I do sincerely hope you did, feel free to hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you happen to be new to the channel, hello, welcome, and consider subscribing to stay up to date for whenever new content is posted. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next time.